Do you live in an apartment? Do you pay a bill to conserve it? We have details on a lawsuit you need to know about coming up. More confusion on water bills. Should you use auto pay or not? We're working for you. The Oceanside City Council set to decide whether to keep or ban styrofoam in single-use plastic. Transforming a navigation center and the lives of people experiencing homelessness. Fresh off a plane from overseas, we're going to tell you about the incredible mission that rescued Romeo and brought him back to his new owner, a Camp Pendleton Marine. It takes an army of volunteers to run one of the world's most famous Navy ships, the USS Midway Museum. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Renters in San Diego are fired up about a third party utility billing company saying they're seeing unexplained costs and they can't get answers. Good evening. I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carla Giacchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Conservice is a utility management provider. They're responsible for billing for utilities like water, gas, trash, and in some cases, electricity. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes talked to some people who say they'd rather pay the bill directly to the utility companies, cutting out the guesswork and the middleman making money. Kirsten. Yeah, the problem the tenants we talked to today say is that when they get their bills from Conservice, they can't prove how much water or electricity or any other utility each person is actually using. So for those who conserve or those who overuse, they're all splitting one bill and they can't prove how much each person actually owes. It's really a bully tactic. They're putting everything on me, and it's just, it's really stressful. Mr. Crawford, who has only to be identified by his last name, says he's been frustrated with conservice billing issues for a while now. When I first moved into there, my conservice bill was like less than like $100. So this bill went up to like, like four or 500 but when he went to get answers, first from his apartment complex, then from SDG&E, he was redirected back to Conservice with no real response. Conservice had taken over my SDGE bill and then in return was paying it, asking me for the money along with a $50 uh, rebuild fee. I didn't want none of this. I was more than capable of paying my own bill. And when Crawford tried to get his bill broken down for his individual apartment? If you want me to pay this bill, shouldn't you show me my meter and show me the bill that was received by you from SDGE? That's when Crawford says he was told to just pay up. Landlords are allowed to give reasonable estimates for use amongst all the property uh, tenants. However, they have to disclose that in their leases. Jimmy Parker is a local attorney who has filed a class action lawsuit against Conservice. So they're representing that this is the amount that is owed for everyone that split pro rata, meaning per person, and it's not subject to any upcharge. In an email to CBS 8, Conservice told us they work with tens of thousands of properties all across the country and support over 850 residential communications and over 100,000 residents. So we deserve to know a consumer report as to what is going on with uh, these uh, fees. The next court date for that class action lawsuit is set for November. Now, if you are a conservice customer right now, there is nothing you need to do to join this lawsuit. It's still going through the legal system. If it moves forward, conservice customers will be contacted about next steps. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Now, Kirsten, how would a renter know if they're paying their utilities through conservice? All right, so I've had to pay utilities through Conservice myself in other times in other areas across the country. Remember, this is a nationwide company. If you are a Conservice customer, it is hard to miss. You actually receive that bill when you get your invoice from your landlord or your rental agreement. So it's pretty hard to miss. If you are a Conservice customer, you've seen that billing before. Jesse. All right, Kirsten Holmes live for us tonight, continuing our expansive coverage on utility concerns and issues all throughout San Diego. Kirsten, thank you. Unusually high water bills from the city of San Diego also have some of you questioning whether you should set up auto pay. Coming up tonight in our second half hour, we're working for you to get some answers. San Diego police need your help finding a man accused of threatening and assaulting a rabbi in the college area. Tonight, these surveillance videos from photos of the man have just been released. Police are hoping that you can help identify him. Investigators say he confronted a 65-year-old rabbi who was wearing traditional faith clothing in a 7-Eleven store back on July 24th. 
They say this man started screaming anti-Semitic comments and then ripped part of the rabbi's outer religious garment. He's described as white, late 20s to early 30s. You see a photo of him here, five feet, eight inches tall, with long wavy hair, possibly dreadlocks. Anyone with information about who this man is or could be should call San Diego police or Crime Stoppers at 888-580-8477. Tonight, the Oceanside City Council is considering banning styrofoam and single-use plastic. Supporters of the ordinance say the move will protect our beaches and ocean. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe joins us live from Oceanside with the latest on the vote. Rocio? Yeah, and council set to take a vote on this matter any moment now as they meet and gather inside. I spoke to people on both sides of this issue, some who say Oceanside is lagging behind when it comes to this matter and should pass this law as so many other cities have done in our region and in our county. I also spoke to other people, business owners, some who say that this new law, if passed, would only hurt them financially. This is a plastic bag they pulled out of a sea turtle. Oceanside is considering cracking down on single-use plastic and foam food products. Plastic's a problem for our ocean, for our beaches, and for our communities, and for, for public health of humans and animals as well. The new law would make it illegal for all businesses to use all forms of single-use plastic and styrofoam citywide. Everyone wants cleaner beaches. No one wants plastic in our communities. It's just a matter of getting it right. I spoke to business owners on and off camera who tell me the new ordinance would only raise their prices. So it's ridiculous. Am I going to charge in a little souvenir shop more money or am I expected to bear the brunt of it myself? This definitely gets more and more expensive, whatever you do. Mitch Silverstein with the Surfrider Foundation supports the ban. He says styrofoam is not biodegradable and pollutes local waterways, which endangers marine life. It just turns into smaller and smaller pieces that are really impossible to manage. And once it gets in the ocean, you know, you can't really get it out. A similar ban was approved by the San Diego City Council last year. Over 80 cities have done that already in the state, and we're hoping Oceanside will do it tonight. Now, if passed, this new ball, uh, ban would go into effect next July for the styrofoam products, and the single-use plastic ban would go into effect the following year in July of 2025. Back to you. Thanks, Rocio. Now, why has it taken Oceanside longer than other cities to consider this ban? Well, actually, Oceanside did, uh, City Council did consider a similar ban a few years ago. However, that ban and that proposal, rather, was only geared towards restaurants. So that had a lot of council members divided at that time. So this latest proposal is much more broader, including all businesses in Oceanside and council, of course, still uh, waiting to see what they decide to vote on with this issue. And of course, we'll bring you the very latest both on air and online. In okay. Oceanside, Rocio de la Fe, CBS 8. Thank you. We will be keeping close tabs on that vote. Thanks so much, Rocio. A homelessness triage center is now open in Oceanside after the city invested $7 million to transform an old school. It's now been turned into a navigation center that is operated by the San Diego Rescue Mission nonprofit. CBS 8's Abby Black has an exclusive look at how the navigation center is helping unsheltered people in North County. Last fall, I stood in this very spot right here in the former high school auditorium. 11 months later, the San Diego Rescue Mission and the city of Oceanside have made this a place of faith, hope, and love. As you walk the halls of the newly renovated Oceanside Navigation Center for people experiencing homelessness, you can really see the transformation. I have a hard time asking for help. 64-year-old Steve Malaski says first he needed to accept his past so he could accept help to get off the streets. There's a lot of misconceptions about homelessness. It's sad how what people think about us because I found that I'm my own victim. But now he's choosing to live a sober life and live at the navigation center that provides a case manager, health care services, and connections to permanent housing and education during a 30-day stay. Almost everybody gets in. You can have a physical disability. You can have a pet. Uh, you can have an addiction. Donnie Dee's the CEO of the San Diego Rescue Mission. He gave us an exclusive tour of the center where they provide 50 beds for men, women, and families. It's a place where they can get online and stay in touch with family, uh, look for housing, uh, look for jobs, uh, figure out doctor's appointments. There's a cafeteria and restrooms with showers and a room filled with donated toiletries and racks of clothes where guests can pick out outfits. Yeah, somebody told me they the best dressed homeless person I know. But how else do I feel good? 
In addition to Oceanside, the San Diego Rescue Mission has a facility in downtown San Diego, and they're also building a larger one in National City. The nonprofit says that they've seen a 65% success rate of keeping guests off the street at the Navigation Center. But we'll help you figure out where you go next because you're not going back to the streets. Oceanside's homeless population dropped compared to last year, but it's still the second highest in North County. With the help of federal, state, and county grants, the city of Oceanside invested $7 million to renovate the former Ocean Shores Continuation. High School. Part of the problem with the way that we're addressing homelessness right now is that we meet somebody living on the streets and we're trying to solve all of their issues while they're camped out on a sidewalk. Let's get you inside. And help many find it in themselves to transform their future. I think major society, oh, it's, and we're not like that. And this place will help foster a more positive outlook in the community, I think. In Oceanside, Abby Black, CBS 8. Happy to see that resource is up in North County now. Thanks for that update, Abby. Still ahead, Republican presidential candidates are debating for the first time tonight. Plus, India isn't the first country to land a spacecraft on the moon, but the country still made history today. Basking in the sunshine with some warm temperatures, but even warmer ones are in store for next week. We'll take a look at those details coming up. And a CBS 8 follow-up, the mission that reunited this dog with his marine owner and their happy ending.